What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, and we're here today at the Nerd Castle playing the next episode, number four of our Dawn of War 2 playthrough. In the last episode, we had come to notice that the orcs were possibly being manipulated, as they were in the first Dawn of War as well, but before we go any further into our mission, let's jump in and take a look at some of the equipment that we've managed to wrangle in the last mission. Here we'll find that Liamon has hit level 4, and so he's got a little bit of time, or a little bit of points here that we can actually allocate. Time we also have, I mean a video game character I suppose has all the time in the world. I think what I wanted him to do next was Battle Cry. I wanted to make him as resilient as possible, perhaps turning him into our tank for the course of the gameplay. If we ever manage to get our hands on some Terminator armor or anything of that nature, I'll probably give it to him as well. Thunder hammers, you know, power swords, all that good stuff, it's all probably going to go to our force commander. The other point, I don't really know what I want to put it into. It would be interesting to give him a plasma gun down the line, but I'd really prefer to avoid making him a jack of all trades, so I think I'll just give him a little bit of the extra HP. The next ability we're going to be going towards is, ah, unshakable. It makes it so that he has a lot of trouble being knocked down. Now we have some accessories that we can throw around. We have Herald of the Coming Doom, which is going to have a pretty high DPS, so I think I'll give that to him, and that's going to raise him from 17, or from 7.2 up to 11.2, I think it said. Maybe 7.4, I didn't catch that number. I don't feel like sitting and swapping these around a whole bunch. Not a massive upgrade, but it is something at the bare minimum. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of something. Let's take a look at Tarkus. We'll figure out if he's got any upgrades coming down the pipe. He does not, unfortunately. I was really hoping he would. He can equip the Prayer of Righteousness, which, which it'll increase his armor rating a tad. Not really an incredibly useful thing for a ranged unit to have, though. We're going to keep him in cover a lot, hopefully avoiding any type of melee combat. Other things that I'd like to give him, he has Taunt. I don't really think we want to use that too much. Instead, I figure we're going to keep pumping points, possibly, into his ranged ability until he hits range specialist which will allow him to use plasma guns the ultimate ability is tactical expertise it allows him to deal additional damage and he gets some defensive benefits I don't really know if it's gonna be worth it to go all the way down the pipe with that but we'll kinda of think about that as the game moves along Avidus and Tarkus not a whole lot I'm sorry Avidus and Cyrus not a whole lot going on here we're just gonna give him the improved armor with Avidus I think we have a new gun that he can possibly use maybe not it, I could be, well, the improved heavy bolter. No. Okay. What about all this armor that's been dropping? So it's all for level 5. Unfortunately, the game doesn't like to give you stuff that's going to be useful straight out of the gate very frequently. In fact, it's usually you're looking forward to most of the stuff that you're going to end up using. Avidus, however, does have an extra accessory slot. We're going to give him this artillery strike ability. And we'll try that out in some of the later missions. Other than that, I think we're about ready to go. So here's the briefing. Commander, the time has come to strike at our true enemy. Whoever has been provoking and guiding the Greenskins is holed up at Fellhammer Mine on the outskirts of Argus. We believe that Mech Badzappa, the orc who escaped us when you first arrived on Calderas, is also headed for the mine. You and your squads will drop south of Fellhammer and push north. Strength and firepower will pay greater dividends than stealth. For this reason, Sergeant Cyrus will remain aboard the Armageddon and provide mission support. Alright, so we actually don't get to bring our scouts along. I think that's because we get a new unit in this mission that we're going to have to play with. But we do get a new chainsword at the end of the mission, which is pretty sweet. But let's deploy it and see how this whole thing pans out. Right here, yeah, we're going to get a new unit. So it's giving you a little bit of the background on Sergeant Thaddeus. I'm not a big fan of the assault troops. Some people are big advocates of them, but for me, I really prefer to bring Cyrus Avatus and just keep the basic team that they give you earlier on in the game. I think using the assault squad takes the tactical prowess that I just simply don't have. I always end up deploying them a little too soon or a little too late, and I can never quite get them to do what I want. And squish. Let's have a look around here. I really dislike that I can't use WASD to pan around. I should probably re-keybind that. I've never been a big fan of using the edge of the screen to scroll around. Looking at the mission at hand, there's a bunch of stuff to the south of us. We might think about capturing this foundry while we're out and about. But it looks like we're going to be pressing due north for the most part. I'm going to move the tackies over here. 
Devastator's in there. Let's go ahead and get our Force Commander moving in. It does look like they're going to make it to cover, which is a little unfortunate. I was hoping that they wouldn't, but we should be able to flush them out with this character at the bare minimum. Our Force Commander might also think about possibly demol- There we go. Get to Fellhammer Mine and find out who is stirring up the orcs. Tactical this way, bro. I'm gonna try and keep people in cover the best as possible. I know that kind of seems like it needs to go unstated, but you never know. Movement on the ridge. <laughs> Gone. But those were no orcs. Lovely. So it looks like the Eldar are throwing their hats into the ring. I don't really have a spot to place Avatus, so I'm just going to keep him back and hope for the best. We will avenge them. Keep moving. Orc gunners on the ridge. Looks like we've got dead bodies all over the place. Fury from the sky! Cut them down! Well, that seemed to handle the problem. Looks like we've got some Imperial Guard bodies around, a couple of Space Marines around. And Sergeant Thaddeus, reporting for duty, Commander. Did you have a pleasant rest, waiting for the most dramatic moment to strike? Good to see you too, Avatus. Repositioning, brothers. We go. All right, so we've been given control of Thaddeus. Not my favorite unit, but still an okay unit. We can actually use him to destroy Commander, cover and get the jump on people like so. Jump packs to land right in the middle of those gunners. And They're no match for us in close combat. Gunners eliminated. Commander, there is a communications array nearby that we should secure for the chapter. Strategic assets like these grant us combat advantages and allow us to more easily reinforce in the field. I will run a scan on their defenses. Commander, the orcs are well entrenched at the main entrance. A frontal assault would be unwise. A jump, some grenades, and we're in, Cyrus. And right in the sights of the whole orc horde. So I would really, I thought that was a foundry to begin with, but I guess I mixed up the icon. It's not a foundry, it's a communications array, which is cool. That allows us to call in more artillery. That actually might be the most astute way to go about doing this. Taking a look at the surroundings, I don't see a whole lot of really good approaches to get ourselves in here, but we do have the CP over here, which is going to allow us to replete our troops as necessary. Let me think about deployment schemes here. And I think if I can get Tarkus there, Avatus there, we've got these gents all ready to roll. And I think with Thaddeus and whatnot, if we can jump into here and actually wipe out this cover, we'll probably be fine. Alright, let's get them the hell out. Although they are suppressed now, so they may actually end up getting dropped, unfortunately. Yeah, that was unwise on my part. Probably going to use up some medkits here, just getting them out. But at the same time, at least we annihilated that first cover. Let's drop them back to the CP and they should be able to get their troops back. And then over here, maybe take the Force Commander and charge this location. They do have suppressing fire, which I hadn't thought about. Let me see if maybe I can knock them out of the way like so. I know that for the most part, suppressing troops or troops with heavy weapons aren't so great at melee. They tend to be fairly easy to bulldoze. I don't really know if I want to send in Tarkus just yet. Maybe occupy them just a tad. Have Tarkus put a grenade over there just to get rid of him so we don't get suppressed at the wrong moment. Down they go. Tarkus managed to shoot him anyway, so it wasn't really a peak concern. We managed to get it taken care of either way. A little bit of a mess, but not so terrible. Force Commander is going to finish him off, and then the communications array is going to be well under our control. That will allow us, if we take a look at Avatus here, my other option with Avatus was to call in artillery strikes, and I think that may have been the better option. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to pull that one out of the fire, but it will allow us to deploy more artillery strikes in the future once we take this position. And there it is. Commander, this array will provide us with valuable combat intelligence in future operations. Fellhammer mine is close by, Commander. I'm going to think about, let's deploy there. Avatus is going to be there. We'll put our assault squad over on the right. This is why I don't use the assault squad, though. You saw in that last engagement how things definitely were suboptimal. That tends to be how things go whenever you give me a heavy melee unit. I'm just not very good at using them properly. And I tend to avoid them for that regard. Then I tend to deploy snipers and things of that range. 
I definitely tend to function a little bit better at a range. Someone else has gone through here. Swiftly, before the humans arrive. We cannot allow one obstinate orc to derail the Fossia's plan. We have our orders. So it sounds like the Eldar are definitely throwing their lot in on this engagement being the opportunists that they are. Well, they seem to be doing a pretty good job with their sparkle powers, but that's what the Eldar are known for. Sparkle powers and, you know, fighting somewhat dishonorable tactics, teleporting around. I don't think I've ever met an Eldar player, to be honest. Haven't found a lot of them. I'm actually going to avoid this engagement altogether, and we're just going to call in an artillery strike. And there it is. And that's why the artillery strike is quite useful. Give them a little bit of the shock and awe. Seems to work pretty well. I'm going to command everybody into position. Hopefully we can get them flanked. Let's see if it's going to be a possibility, maybe. Let's go ahead and see what kind of fight we can get into up here. Maybe do a little charge right there, knock them all out of the way. Then we'll fall back with the Force Commander. That'll allow us to place everybody back into the position we want them to be. We'll grab the Death Touch of the Angel, which will be very useful once we start deploying Cyrus. I don't really have... Let's see if we can get Thaddeus up here to handle this little blob. I don't know if that's the best way to use him, but it seems like a pretty good deployment spot. Let me see if I can flush out this cover really quickly. There we go. Annihilate that cover, have him pull back out. And not exactly the tactic that I was thinking about. I thought I clicked them a little bit further over, but then they're going to drop in. Let's fall back to cover with them. They're going to throw one of their sparkle balls at us, but no sparkle ball shall ever touch our Space Marines armor. This final engagement should go pretty quickly. They don't seem to have a lot of cover. We'll grab these supplies as quickly as we can because we are pretty low on anything of that regard. We're going to capture this CP. All of these supply crates are going to help us get our med kits back. That's the big deal. I, I get the feeling we're probably going to have to go up against a boss fairly soon. Yeah, so let's get our support items refilled. It's going to take them a moment to capture that CP anyway, so... Not a whole lot else going on. Come on, guys. You can beat a crate. You just wiped out an entire force of Eldar. Pretty sure you can handle a crate. There's another one over there. Let me take a look at my force commander. See, he's got four med kits on deck. Let's move the tackies up. We're also going to move the devastators up. Let me move the force commander in. Oh, they've got a covered position right there. Never mind. Unfortunately, I don't really have anybody that's going to be able to flush that out. Instead, what I would think is maybe we can put a grenade on that location, but it might cost us a space marine. And I don't like use I don't like losing my tactical marines, unfortunately. There we go. Oh. All right, well, we've got an Eldar Warlock coming at us now. I'm going to send in all of my melees and have them see if they can just do a little bit of damage here. We are a pretty melee heavy force right now, so I get the feeling he's probably going to try and kite us around if he can. Let me draw them out, maybe. I just saw something get marked on the ground and it makes me a little nervous. I guess not. Wow, did he just snipe a hole? Oh, okay, I thought he killed an entire unit carte blanche. That would have been a problem. Let me get people into a better position to maintain fire on the Warlock. Unfortunately, I don't feel like I'm dealing a whole lot of damage here. Let's draw them out of the melee if we can. I would prefer very much for them not to be engaged in melee. We're going to suppress as hard as we can. Have them kind of disband. No, I didn't tell you to do that. Stay out of melee. All right, there we go. Now I've got people roped in as I would like them to be. We don't have the cover that I would like, but they're not firing too much at us anyways. They should be able to. As we level up Tarkus, I've heard rumors that Tarkus is just a beast if you keep giving him range powers. What the Eldar are doing here, I have no idea. 
All right. Yours could have slowed them down, given us time. You, you have doomed us all. Grant all you wish, Eldar. We stand, and you have fallen. This victory will long be remembered in the Halls of Glory. Alright, so there's our new Chainsword. In all honesty, I... A lot of people talk a lot of good smack about the Eldar, but whenever the Eldar talk in any of the storylines or any of the books, they definitely always seem to know what's going on. And I always feel like the Space Marines are typically walking around with very little information when they ignore the Eldar. We did a little bit better on speed that time, not doing horribly. Hopefully we'll be able to jump through and get a little bit better of an experience award next time. No level 5s among us, unfortunately. We are going to need level 5 troops, but we'll try and do that in the next engagement, possibly. Let's do a little bit of storyline here, and then we'll close out the episode. This is a grave development, Commander. The Eldar are evidently provoking and influencing the Orcs. Their involvement is hardly good news. They claim to be stirring up the Orcs to combat a common threat. What could that be? I would not put much stock in what the Eldar say. They are deceitful and manipulative by nature. That they are, Tarkas, but the Eldar aren't fools. The warlock you defeated may have been guiding the orcs here on Calderas, but he was only one part of a larger plan. We are receiving reports that the Eldar are stirring up the orcs on the nearby Typhon system. The Armageddon will take you to Typhon, so you can engage the enemy there. I will relay all distress signals we receive from Typhon back to you. Alright, so that was the next day, so day number 5 in our Dawn of War 2 playthrough. My name is Splattercat. I am happy to have you here at the Nerd Castle at all times. I hope you've been enjoying this playthrough, and I definitely look forward to seeing you guys for the next mission. Take care out there, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow.